Hello, and welcome to another episode of Anime Territory, the anime podcast that nobody listens to. Why'd you say it weird? I didn't say it weird. You're like, oh, dude, anime... I don't know, the way you said it I might have forgot what I was about to say. I lost my place. (laughs) Okay. I am your host this week, Benjamin, and with me, as always, is Johnny the Flying Pussyfoot. Johnny, how are you? (laughs) I'm good. So, uh, that name will make sense a little bit later in the episode. It's too uh, good. I had to use it. Okay. Um, All right. So this week we will be discussing Bacano, but first let's get into Thirty for Thirty. Yeah. Johnny, would you like to explain this again? Yeah, yeah. I several years ago, Crunchyroll had a sale where you could buy thirty anime DVDs for thirty dollars. Um, I got the package, and because of the way that some of them are like packaged together. I ended up getting like 32 anime DVDs for $30. So, um, 30 for 30, better name. Yeah. But uh, we pick a, a random number between 1 and 32. And then, or like this week we did 1 and 31. Yeah. Um, and then we have to count off and then watch whatever DVD we land on. So mm. we landed on... Dragon Hunters. Which is... Not an anime. anime. Not an anime. Maybe that's why, maybe maybe that one didn't count as a DVD, because it's not an anime DVD, they just threw it in there because they had box space, who knows? Who knows, but it's but not it an a, anime. It was, a, it was a French, French slash American made show. They said Canadian. I don't think so. Who said it was French Canadian? I think you just, you've heard French and me say something else, and we're like, French Canadian, that's a thing. But I don't think it was. I don't think it said French Canadian. He said Canadian. I mean, I'll Google it Google again. It. Uh, well, anyways, while I'm doing that, why don't we, we talk about this show? So, Dragon Hunters is an animated show, very much in the vein of like I would say like CW Kids. In that vein, it's just two guys are dragon hunters and they go out. I got a very, dragons. I got a very Jackie Chan Adventures vibe from it. Okay, I watched very little of that show. Okay, but well, that, that's I, just I got the you. Vibe. Yeah. So I think Jackie Chan Adventures is probably a little bit better, if only because Jackie Chan is in it. Uh, Jackie Chan's in that? Sort of. He doesn't voice himself. Oh, really? He's a character. He shows up in some like live action bits at like the beginning or the end, I think. But he's, he's in the not, credits. Yeah, but he's not. He does not voice himself in the show. Wow, that's uh, kind of disappointing. But like, he shows up for like some live action, like I'm Jackie Chan. I'm gonna whatever, you know. Uh, you were right. I said French Canadian animated things. Ha, ha. Uh, intro was by The Cure, which was like, all right, <laughs> all right. I don't listen to The Cure, but I know of The Cure. I know of The Cure. Listening to the song, I'm like, I've heard a song like this. Yeah. I Google The Cure songs. I'm like, none of these sound right. But I'd probably have to like actually listen yeah. to them to figure out which ones I've heard before. But interesting, interesting. They have The Cure do the opening. Um. I don't know. What, what did you think of this show? It wasn't very good. It was okay. I mean, again, as I said when we were watching it, I feel like I'd like this more if I was younger. Yeah, like if I was 10, I'd probably all about this. Yeah. And I think it has potential. It has potential mm-hmm. to get more interesting, but as it was, it was just kind of... Eh. eh. <laughs> they sort of fight dragons. There was only like one dead dragon that we ever saw. That like bug one. Oh, yeah. That Prince Charming killed. Stole their kill from them. They killed the last one, didn't they? The volcano one? Did they kill that one? I don't know. I might he have blew up. It. I'm assuming he died. Okay. And that chick killed a bunch of those bugs. Yeah, they killed a bunch of those bugs. Yeah. Which I guess but like, all, on dragons. Yeah. Bugs. But like all in all, it was just kind of very, very tame dragon hunting show with mm-hmm. very little. And the animation wasn't great. Like you mentioned. It's, it she, was fine. The one dragon hunter lady killed a bunch of bugs, but just kind of like she's swinging her sword and then the bugs go poof. Like yeah. it's. It was not very... Like, they were just standing still. <laughs> it's not like they were swarming her. It's just... Okay. Was, it was nice getting the first episodes of it, though. Yeah. Yeah, it was episodes one through four. Yeah. Which, there was a typo on the DVD about what episode one was called, but whatever. <laughs> they got the rest of the episodes right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's not much to say about this yeah. one. It had a it had a 3D animated movie mm-hmm. um, come out in 2008. Uh... Forrest Whitaker voiced the big guy in it, though. So oh, that's really? Something. They got yeah. Forrest Whitaker? Yeah, and then, like, the Rob Paulson. Guy? Yeah. <laughs> and then they got Rob Paulson to voice the other guy. The, okay. 
Quizno. Quizdo? I just called him Quizno. <laughs> yeah. I think it was Quizno or something. I think there's a D. There's, there's... Quizno? Quizmo? Quizdo? Quizdo? I think it was Quizdo. Okay. Whatever. It doesn't yeah. matter. I got all the dibs. Um, okay. I don't think I saw you call dibs once. No, I Not even on Roger. <laughs> oh, that was a good... You didn't call dibs on Roger. No, I'm just saying. Okay. It's a guy like Roger shows up. You don't call dibs on him? I don't know. You're slacking. You're uh, slacking. I guess I'm just slacking for not calling dibs on a children's show. It is whatever. Alright. All um, right. That's it. If that's good, I think it's good. Let us know. They had if, potential, but overall, pretty boring. If it was, if it's got two seasons, the second season might only be in French. I don't know. Because <laughs> they had listed, there was the French voice actor, the movie voice actor... Like I was looking at the character list, yeah. and then, then the TV show first season. I didn't uh, say who, who voiced them second season, so maybe there wasn't an English voice actor second season. Maybe it's all in French. Interesting. So, uh, on sure. to our main topic today, which is Bacano. Yes. Our so, Bacano. This is the first time I'm watching it. This yep. was your third time. At least. At least. Possibly my fourth time. Okay. You... I've definitely seen it subbed and dubbed before. Okay. Do you would... want any other backgrounds or just... Um, I mean, it's just one of those... We talk about them when we talk about our favorite animes a lot, that it's just one of those formative ones. Okay. So it's something I watched when I was really starting to get into the more you know, adult level anime. Mm -hmm. Not one of the ones I watched when I was like 12. Okay. One of the ones I was getting back into it when we were 18 or whatnot. Yeah. Um, very, very solid stuff. Yeah. Um, it's a spoiler alert. It's not on my favorite animes list, but okay. it's probably on like my 11 through 20 list. If okay. I had to, if I had to guess. So it's, that makes sense. I'm assuming the dub. Um, I don't know. It's been, it's been a while since I've watched this. This is the one where I think a lot of people say the dub is better. This, right? this is one. And one of the reasons I've heard for that is because, like, well, it takes place in America, and they're doing, like, oh, okay. 1930s New York gangster accents, and it's like, that kind of detracts from it uh, at times. <laughs> like, there are some really good dub performances in this. I can't speak today. Uh, I love Isaac and Miria's performance, and I love Vlad Russo's performance. Okay. I'm glad we're getting into this, because it's probably the best dubbed anime I've seen in terms of acting. Did you see... You watched... FMA Brotherhood dub, didn't you? Mm -hmm. okay. That's a one of. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, like, that's another classic. Because um, I typically watch a lot of animes. I watch. I watch sub. I don't watch a lot of dub. I'd say the ones that I make you watch dub like, are the good ones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like, welcome to the NHK. Yeah. Steins Gate. Uh, Steins Gate. Well, I still like the sub for Steins Gate. The that's dub true. for Steins Gate is very solid. Yeah. I will say that r right up front. I just don't think J. Michael Tan quite takes it up the same level that Okabe's voice actor in Steins Gate does. I got that. Yeah. I and like, that. maybe I just don't like like how they adapted some of the jokes in the Steins Gate dub, too. It was weird, because like, I, when I watched the dub and the sub, and at the end of the dub, I'm like, I think this show makes more sense subbed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that is a show where it, there's a lot of stuff happening. <laughs> yeah. So, it's like, I think I... The sub makes more sense. Yeah. I don't but. know if they dumbed down any of like the sci-fi in it, but like I just know like J. Michael Tatum was a big Doctor Who fan, so he threw a couple of Doctor Who jokes in the okay. um thing. And it's like and I I'm I, I like Doctor Who too. I'm not saying yeah. don't don't throw those in there. It's just it seemed seemed kind of out of place. I got you. Um we're getting off tangents about dubs. The other dub I was gonna say is that Hari's got a great dub. I refuse to watch the sub for Hari. Well that's because you got Keon. Yeah, you've got uh, um, God, this is Crispin Freeman. Crispin okay. Freeman. I didn't know so who you were trying to say, though. <laughs> Crispin, yeah. Crispin, Crispin Freeman. Wendy, Wendy Lee? Yeah, Wendy yeah. Lee. Come on. I'm like, you're, you're I, the I, voice I know. actor person. I know, but I don't I'm, know anything. But now I'm under pressure. I'm like, if I get this wrong, I'm, I'm an idiot. <laughs> this is two of my favorite voice actors. I can't get this wrong. And follow both of them on Twitter. <laughs> but yeah, there are some very good voice performances in this show. I, I would say especially Miriam and Isaac. 
Vlad Russo is really good. I, I feel like those are the top. Yeah. The well, I think it might have been like the voice actor for Vlad Russo's like breakout role. Oh yeah. Like, like it might have been his first like big role. Um, I know like Joel McDonald was in it too. It was one of his breakout roles. He voices. Okay. Um, yeah, he's Dandy, right? No, he's a uh, cat. Yeah, he's Meow and Space yeah. Dandy, but. He in this he is um, what's his name the, the jacuzzi jacuzzi spot. Oh okay yeah you're right jacuzzi was good yeah it was a little jacuzzi was one of those ones where it was like okay his voice is a little annoying but I think it's supposed to be a little yeah. annoying he's just some like punk ass kid yeah <laughs> um, that's no, way in over his head that cries a lot <laughs> um, say so there are some performances that might have been a little weak but I you know I think yeah. he's really good. Yeah, there were some stunner roles. It was yeah. it was good. The accents are like I don't know. It is better this time than the first time I watched it. I think I was a little taken aback by like this is a choice. Yeah. <laughs> but it makes sense. So um good stuff. Good, yeah, love good, good dub. Watch this one dubbed or subbed. Do both. What you should want to watch it more than once. Cool. So do you want to do very light plot wise? Yeah, general impressions. General impressions. Uh it's really good. Uh I would say it is a little confusing. It detracts a little bit. It took takes almost the entire series to kind of figure out what's going on. Okay. That might just be me. That I think that might partially be by design though. Okay. Cuz like when I watched it this time, I watched the first episode and you were confused as hell. Like, yeah. Did they my, just my did very they just... first note was, "What?" <laughs> and I'm just like, "Dang, they're spoiling lots of stuff." Maybe that's what it's cuz they're just Jumping, yeah, back and forth. We we should probably time. note right away that this is this is very uh, <clears throat> Tarantino ish. Though I say that it's really only Pulp Fiction that he does that, right? Where he jumps a lot, yeah, I think and there's so. different storylines and stuff that well, interweave. Basically, the story takes place in three different times. Yeah, there's, there's three timelines, and they show a lot of stuff towards the end of the timeline in the first episode when you have no context for yeah. it, and you're like, what? Yeah. And then, then you get the context for it, but they still like. I, I would say, for the most part, they they put things in the proper order. Yeah. But you're jumping between different timelines, and you're like, wait a minute, so this one actually happened in the past. Yeah. And you know, th- this storyline happened a year ago, and these other two storylines are sort of happening concurrently, but in different. One of them's happening on a train headed towards New York. One of them's happening in New York. Technically different years, but they're like right next to each other. Cause... Well, it's like one of the storylines ends in 1932 and one of them ends on the last day in 1931. Yeah, so it's like, this one's like 1930. And then yeah, it's they'll, they'll show a scene and, and then they'll say like, wait a minute, wait. this scene's happening in 1932, but I thought it said it was that she was in 1931 earlier. And it's yeah. like, no, it is. It's just... It's happening right around the, the change of the yeah. year. A few things that are left dangling. There are more books. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of by design that things are left dangling. I'm um, fine with that, though. Because I feel like, as, as the story, though, it, 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 it ends it. it well, ends and they, they address it, too, through, like, the, the basically one of the first two characters, the first two characters we meet are the, the vice president of this newspaper and his assistant, Carol. Yeah. And, like, their whole point towards the end was, like, stories Don't like there, there, there there is no beginning or ending to the story it's yeah. people's lives like yeah. there's you can go as far back as you can but you know you know or you can start in the story in the middle and it doesn't matter because the story keeps going on mm-hmm. like it's people's lives interweaving but you, you get the answers that you care yeah. about and you get promises for like well oh, things might uh, happen uh you know mm-hmm. but yeah uh very solid um uh, with the new rating Probably about an eight. I would give it a nine or a ten. Okay. I would say I probably gave it an eight or a nine on my anime list. Okay. But after this viewing, I would give it a nine or a ten. Because I don't think it does anything wrong. Okay. Oh, I might push it up to a nine. Yeah. Yeah, a ten is like... it's. Yeah, it's not a ten for me. I, I can respect that. Yeah. But it's so dang close. It is... It is very good. So, you want to get into a little bit more of a spoilerly toy territory? Yeah. Can't talk today either. So, we <laughs> we mentioned there's three storylines. Yes. Let's let's give a brief synopsis of what happens in those storylines. Then we kind of go into, like, the factions and the characters yeah. in those factions. Because um, you can't go episode by episode in this. 
No, you really can't. <laughs> Too much stuff going on. It's you'd be jumping around a yeah. lot, and I don't remember what happens in one episode versus another episode, yeah. and and it's like a lot of it is like there's this mysterious thing happens, and then you know three episodes later we get an answer to what that mysterious thing yeah. is. So first timeline chronologically, 1930. Okay. This one takes place in New York, the streets of New York. There is basically like like a, some kerfuffles between a couple of gangs. Um, there is well, not not there's two gangs versus some punks yeah. and a guy that hired them. Yeah. So um, there is. I mean, I just gotta. Do we just got to talk about the Immortals right away? I mean, you so just we can talk about the bad it. guy. <laughs> so uh, let's do the factions first. Okay. And then maybe. Okay. Then we'll go into. Ta- well, I feel like I don't want to talk about the factions until I give precedence for what's going on in the train. Then go for it. I don't care. Okay. You're the one, to, you're the one explaining. Okay. So <laughs> there's this old dude who's supposedly immortal. Supposedly. Uh, he's, he's over 200 years old. And we've, allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, uh, and we've seen we've seen him um, like sustain injuries, or we've seen characters who also claim to be immortal sustain injuries that then automatically heal. Yes, like you, you see like somebody's fingers get cut off, and then their fingers and their blood like swirl back into where they're supposed Did to. Did we be. see that in the first episode? Uh, yeah, Firo catches a knife. Oh yeah, you're right. That was cool. Yeah, <laughs> that was really cool. Um, Firo was cool. <laughs> Anyway, so there's this old dude who is immortal. Uh, he has another old dude. I got, I'll be honest, the first time watching them, I was like, uh, I thought they were the same person at first. And then I'm like, oh, wait a minute. No, this Barnes, oh, is, about, Barnes okay. is another old dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's trying to, to perfect the, the formula of immortality. Yes. Um, the, the old dude that works for him finally did it uh, by happenstance. <laughs> Some people were playing with fire outside, yeah. accidentally burned down his warehouse. Uh, so he's able to escape with two, with bottles. two bottles of the, the, the perfect you know, elixir yeah. of life. Um, he, gets, he gets mugged by um, three dudes, or four dudes. Four dudes. Four dudes, yep. One of them being one of our characters, Dallas Genoa. Yes. Uh, punk ass kid, rich boy, mugs old people in alleys for fun. Just a real old prick. Yeah. Real asshole. Yeah. Um, so he's getting mugged. They're approached by um, a character named Firo, who is a an up and coming mafia member in the Martillo crime family. Yes. Like, in fact, he's going to be having a ceremony to become a kappa later that night. Um, he sees the fire. He goes to investigate. Is that what they call him? Kappa. Yeah. He has he has a meet cute with uh, with a character named Innes. Yes. Um, they basically he runs into them. He's like, "Hey, you shouldn't be picking on old people." Beats beats the hell out of all four of them without <laughs> breaking a sweat. Um, and then old guy runs away. Old guy runs away with the with the elixir. Mm-hmm. Um, but the elixir fall- no 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 that, oh that's right Firo walks away the old guy starts to move Dallas wakes back up after Firo has left steals the steals the elixir from him then oh okay um, he goes to another crime family the Gandor crime family yep saying like hey I need your guys' help because you know I'll, I'll join you guys if you help me out with teaching this Firo punk a lesson um, and they're like uh, do you, there's a reason we'd never reach out to you. We don't really like you. Also, oh. Firo's been our friend since childhood. Yeah, so, uh, no. So, no. So they leave, they leave the elixir there. Yes. On accident. Mm-hmm. Um, then we finally, we finally meet the immortal old guy. Um, turns out that Innis character is like his assistant. Yes. Um, and then there's other stuff going on with her, but. Yes. Um, they... Basically, he's trying to find the the elixir of life, and yeah. then it, it ends up in the hands of these mafia people, and it's kind of a why are that they... old? It keeps switching hands. Yeah, it, it yeah. keeps switching hands. And nobody really knows what it is until yeah. you know they just think it's alcohol, basically, because yeah. it's in a 
Yeah, it's in like a wine bottle. So yeah, it's or whatever. Whatever. It's prohibition. It's in a bottle of some sort. So it's alcohol. (laughs) That's true. Um, yeah, that's your first timeline. It's basically again all about these bottles will be the immortality serum, whatever you want to call it, and it's just kind of switching hands between these different gang mob. Yeah. As they're as they're fighting off, yeah. Dallas becomes partially immortal because the <laughs> the uh, the old guy enlists them to go get it back, and he has like basically has like half the formula due yeah. to circumstances. So he's able to they they'll still die of old age, but they won't take they'll be heal from damage basically. Um, so they they go there, and then it's it's a whole battle between the two mafia gangs and this old guy and Dallas basically is yeah. Dallas and his friends. So that's the first timeline. Yep. And it just, um, Isaac and Miria are also there. Yep. They have the bottles a couple of times. Yeah. It's, uh, they, they were going to rob both of the mafia families, but then people weren't home at the Gandor one. And then there was a party going on that they decided to join instead at the Martillo crime family. So they were, they're constant sources of enjoyment. Yeah. Um, next storyline happens about a year later or so, maybe more than a year mm-hmm. because it's at the end. 1931, um, Isaac and Miria decide to go visit their friends in New York. They yep. get on a train. There's also a few other factions on a train. Um, uh, what is the name of this train? The name of the train is the Flying Pussyfoot. Boom. There now it go. makes sense. All right. Go Episode ahead. done. Bye. <laughs> And we're back. Next episode. Or not. Same episode. To be honest, we lost some audio. Yeah. <laughs> so we're redoing like two minutes. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll so, go on from there. So, talking about the flying pussyfoot. Yeah, we are. Okay, let's get into it. So there are three factions on this train. Three big factions with a lot of freelance players. Okay, yes. So, first faction, the White Suits, led by Lad Russo. Let's not talk so much about Lad Russo. Let's get into that later. All right. But white, I'm just saying he was lead. I know, I know. We we in the audio that was lost, we talked a little bit more about him. But I think we should leave the um, character talk for a little bit later. Should have talked about this when we lost the audio. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about it till now. Okay, uh, so and it was too late. Led by Lad Russo, they're on the they're on the, the train. Yep, they want to kill people and take over the train and crash the train in New York, causing a lot of damage. That's their goal. Okay, that's their goal. We got the black suits. Yep, the other faction on the train. Yes. They are le- followers of a supposed immortal being named Huey Laforet. Laforet? Laforet. Laforet. It's, oh, it's not French Canadian, it's French. Or French American. <laughs> or French American. So, black suits, uh, cults for this Huey dude. And they are on this train to ransom a senator's family at the get Huey released from prison, I think? Yes, yeah. get him out of prison. And the main person in that faction is Huey's daughter, Shane? Chane. Chane. Dang it. They it's spelled C-H-A-N-E, names. but they kept calling her Chane. Yeah. In the English dub, at least. But nobody likes her. <laughs> nobody nobody likes her except for Huey. Uh, <laughs> we can talk more about Chane later. Yeah. Uh, there, are, there are people that like Chane, but nobody in the black suits likes nobody Chane. Like, no, yeah, nobody in her faction. Shouldn't like some, like yeah, she's a tool for them yeah. basically they want to kill her yeah and then our third faction is led by jacuzzi splot yes they are a bunch of bootleggers uh bomb makers yeah they're, they're like another they're word sort of like think. a smugglers. smugglers that's the word they're sort of like a gang but i wouldn't call them a mafia gang no no but they have had, they have, he has got a lot of people working for him, mm-hmm. and they have butted heads with the Russos in Chicago. Yes. So. And they're on the train to mainly, I think, smuggle some bombs. Yeah. Smuggle maybe some bombs. Some. Maybe steal some bombs, too. There's yeah. word of, you know, cargo being yeah. smuggled in. So. Those are your three factions on the train. And then we also have Isaac and Miriam. Isaac um, and Miriam are, they're, they're a faction of themselves. Yeah. They are uh, everybody's friend, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Um, it's impossible not to like them. Mm-hmm. They are stupid in the best way possible. Yes. 
cheerful and wise in the best ways blissfully possible. Blissfully ignorant? Yes. Is that a good term? I'd say so. Okay. There. They, there's an episode called Isaac and Miria. What is it? It's something without me. Spread joy without meaning to everywhere they go. Um, but it's they use an adjective, um, unknowingly spread joy oh, wherever they I go, right. something like that. Yeah. And it's it's true. <laughs> <laughs> They're dressed like a cowboy and a dancing girl. Uh, they are cosplay thieves. We'll talk about them later. I can't do this. We'll talk yeah. about them later. So those are the, those are the peop- main people on the train. Do you want to talk about anything else on the train, or just go back next next time? There is a mysterious kid named Cheslaw. Um, I think. Yes. There's, I mean, the governor's wife, or not the governor, the senator's wife and daughter on the train. There's somebody named Rachel, and there is supposedly a monster on the loose called the Rail Tracer. Yes. Um, we'll get into that a little more a little later. Yes. So, um, That's what's happening on the train. Yes. So now we need to talk about our third timeline, which is when Eve Genoard, this is happening so I think it it bleeds. It's like the end of the train stuff, and then a couple days later is when it ends. Yeah, so it's basically uh, in the same time frame as the train. Yeah, um, slightly. I think it starts towards the train's end, and then ends yeah. after the train's end. But um, Eve Genoard, the younger sister of Dallas Genoard, the only person that Dallas has ever really been nice to, yes, um, is looking for him. He is he's been missing for a year. Or at least um, nobody knows really what happens to him. Nobody but her really cares what happens to him. Correct. Um, so she, she goes to a newspaper called the Daily Days. Daily Days, who are information days, brokers. Seem to be like a little shady organization because they like know everything. Yeah. I don't know if that's what newspapers. They they sell the information. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're like, a newspaper that also sells information. Okay. So that's. So she goes to them trying to figure out what happened to his her brother Dallas. Yep. And then it's just kind of them trying to put the pieces together on where he would be and who would know. And yeah. Stuff. She gets kidnapped by a rival mafia family at some point. Because they are also looking for him. Yeah. The the Runarata mafia yes. family. The head of that um, tells the head of that Bartolo tells his right hand man Gustavo Baguetta. Baguetta. That. The most important thing, Baguetta wants to start a war with the Gandor and the Martello crime families. Or yes. at the very least, the Gandor family. I think I don't at least think the he, Gandor. Yeah, he, he does not like the Gandors, but the Gandors and the Martellers are kind of close at this point. Yes. So, you know, there'll be a little bit of bleed over. Um, but then he's told, hey, I've got a more important job for you. I need you to go ahead and... Um, find Dallas Genoard. Yes. And then he's like, can I bring him in dead or alive? And the guy's like, yeah, sure, you can make that call, bud. <laughs> not, Gustavo not knowing, but I think Bartolo knowing that you, Dallas is so semi think Bar- Yeah, okay. Uh, definitely towards the end, we were like, yeah. So at one point, they're like, hey, somebody at the newspaper, they, they threaten somebody at the newspaper, and he's like, hey, you know, you can, um, you can probably capture his sister, you know, and use her as bait. So she gets kidnapped at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that guy, that information broker who works with the Daily Days, is kind of trying to incite the war between the Gandors and the Runaradas because it'll make them buy more information from him type of thing. Okay. He sees it that, as a way. Is, yeah. I think he said what his ploy was, but I couldn't remember what it was. Yeah, it he was... basically wants to stoke the flames that are already there just so that it'll drive up business for yeah. him and demand and whatnot. So, um, yeah. but that's not, he's kind of working alone. His name is Nicholas, not to be confused with another character in Jacuzzi's game called Nick, no. <laughs> completely different. Um, but he does not have the same, um, goals as the other newspaper people we've met. Yes. So, um, but he's not necessarily, so Daily Days is kind of a faction. So, I mean, we can talk about. The factions yeah. in the other two timelines are like the Gandor family, the Martillo family, um, Sizlar, 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 It's S Z I L A R D. The old man L-A-R-D. that we talked L-A-R-D. about, who's immortal. I think it's Sizlard. Yeah, I don't know. Sizlar, I feel like it's Sizlard. Yeah, they don't pronounce the Z. It's Sizlard. He's a faction. 
him and the you know him using Dallas, yeah. and then he's also got like a bunch of old rich people waiting for the the true formula. Mm-hmm. Um, the Gandor crime family, the Martillo crime family, the Runerata crime family. Martillos are not really. I mean, they're sort of in the. They're not really in the Eve story, but the no, they're kind the of Gandors so, yeah. are towards the end of it, um, and then the Runerata crime family, which mm-hmm. we've been talking about already, and then the Daily Days. I would say is a faction. Yeah, because they're pretty important. Yeah, so it's it's basically the Daily Days versus the Runeratas, and then the Gandors kind of come in. Yeah, um, there's like various people that. There's like one guy who's like a double agent for the Daily Days. Sugar Cube. Sugar Cube. <laughs> um, you know, and then the yeah, we can we can get into that a little later. But Gustavo, I think, has the contempt of the of the head. <laughs> yes. Especially with what happens towards the end. Yes. Because um, Gustavo, we we learned he actually killed um, even Dallas's older brother and, and father. father. And then Isaac and Miria stole their family fortune. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because Eve was so sad because they were going to be fighting over the, the fort, the, their inheritance. So they just stole all the inheritance so they didn't have anything to fight about. Yeah, they'd be a happy family. Yep. God, I love them so much. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's that's basically the three, the three major timelines. We get flashbacks to some other things. There's an episode that focuses on the 1700s. Um, at one point, we see a scene that happens in 2001. <laughs> that's like the very last episode. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty far into the future. That might be episode 13. Is yeah, it? you're probably right. So we should note that episodes 14, 15, and 16 all take place after the, the main three storylines. Mm-hmm. It's like a conclusion to the people on the train. Yeah, so it focuses a lot on Jacuzzi and... Jacuzzi and a character we haven't mentioned yet. Shone. Uh, yeah, and Shane. Shane. Um, and a character we haven't mentioned yet, which we'll get into. Okay. Um, somebody that works for Lad is, like, the main antagonist of those yeah. episodes. There's some stuff with, with Firo and... Um, Firo and Miza... And um, the Dominoes. Okay. Isaac and Miria uh, and the Martello Crime family set up, set up some dominoes. Well, there's some stuff with some of the other immortals, um, the original ones from 1700 towards the end. Okay, I gotcha. Um, like, we meet, some, we meet some characters that are like, oh, they were only in that one other episode. Okay. Um, you know, so there's a little bit of a wrap-up with there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we also meet we meet the vice president and Carol at the very end too. So they they start and close the show, um, which fittingly they talk about how they're talking about the story of all the things that are happening. And they're like, you know, you didn't think to that maybe we're the start and the end of the show. Ooh, Ooh. We're getting a little meta here, vice president. Yeah, um, a little too. I say vice president. It's the vice president of the Daily Days, but they're not in any of the stories no they're not you know the president of the daily days is yeah. sort of in it his voice is he's not yeah they never show him they never show him i think i think he was just that pile of books <laughs> he might have just been a pile of books you're right um then he but he can he eat sugar cubes because sugar cube goes behind his desk and gives him a sugar yeah, cube. you're right so i mean can pile of, can can book do books eat sugar is that um, how that works so in Minecraft, you use yeah. sugar cane to make paper. There we go. And you use paper and leather to make books. So we're gonna maybe. say yes. <laughs> okay. Is he a pile of books? Unconfirmed. Unconfirmed. <laughs> what is it? It's but not busted. It's maybe. not busted or confirmed. It's unconfirmed. What are the myth? Is it the three MythBusters things are, I never are busted? MythBusters. Oh, you don't watch MythBusters? No. Nah. Okay, we gotta have a MythBusters episode. Nah. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, that, that's the basic thing. Let's let's start talking a little bit more in depth about the characters. Okay. So we talked about. I've just got the black suits listed first. So you want to start with them? Do you want to do that, or you just want to go in terms of how they're building the opening? We can do how they're building the opening. Okay. Let's do that. So first build are Isaac and Mira. Miria. Miria. Sorry. Yes. I'm bad with names. So okay, we're getting into Isaac and Miria first. 
All right, let's skip. We'll, do you want to save those for last? Well, I'm just saying if we do, we're gonna go into we're gonna go into another segment. Oh, okay. Let's save it then. Well, sh- let's go with Firo first. We'll do Firo and Meza. Okay, Firo and Meza. Because they're they're together in that opening. Yeah. So Firo is. We've already kind of described him. He's a young kappa for the Martillo crime family. He can beat up four people at once. Okay. Uh, he he does. Are we spoiling? We're we going full spoilers. Sure. Okay. I mean, in the first episode, I already said yeah. we see him catch a knife and he gets healed from it. Um, he also gets riddled with bullets. He does also get riddled with bullets. First episode, uh, he is a new immortal. Yes. He becomes immortal at the end of the the 1930s story arc on Correct. accident. Correct. Um, <laughs> this is the entire Martelli. Yeah, family. like <laughs> a lot of the higher ups of the Martello crime family, and some of the non higher ups are uh, immortal now. Are immortal now. True immortals. They yes. drank from the. It ended up that they drank the, the. Those bottles ended up in their at their crime. Yes. Party or whatever. Um, he Miza is his mentor. Um, yes. He is an older mortal. He was on the ship in the 1700s when they and first. He was, he was the leader. Yes, yeah. he was the one so he, who knows how to make the formula, yeah. but he has not done it, and he decided not to share that information with the other people who drank of it. Correct. Um, which is why Szilard tries to um, the, tries to make the formula himself, even though he's already immortal, so that yeah. he can profit from it and needs and to he, know things. Yeah, because he only knows half of it. Okay. So those those... We got those. And then we got the Gandor brothers. We have Keith, Keith Berga, and Luck. Yep. Keith. I don't know if Keith ever says anything. I don't think Keith or Berga ever it's, say anything. Berga, Luck, Berga, I think, is like, Luck, what should we do with these guys? <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's, he's like the, Berga's like the brute. He's like the dumb older brother, I think. Yeah. Or like the middle one. I don't know. Keith, I don't really know what the hell Keith does. I think yeah, but luck is, but luck is luck is basically the leader. Yeah, he's the suave one. He's the cool headed one. Yes, um, he's the one who's an actual character. Okay. Also, they're all immortal. They're all immortal. Yep. They immortal. drink it too. They're at the party. Yep. Are they at the party. Or did they, I I they're got the, the impression party. they drank it at their bar because they left it there. No. Okay. They they were at the party because okay. they were they were. Yeah, friends. you're right. They did show up there, didn't they? Yeah. The, those bottles did not get opened until. Until Isaac and Miria okay. <laughs> Spoiler alert. poured it for them as like, well, we're in their house. We should okay. give them. We should give them a gift for not killing us. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are the Gandors. Next, you have Sillard, who's the bad guy. Yep, we've talked he pretty was, much at length about him. He's an OG immortal. Yep, seventeen hundreds. Um, he is basically on a quest for just all knowledge. Yeah. He wants to know everything, yes. Um, no matter what it means. So we should note that the immortals, they can be consumed by other immortals. Yes. If an immortal places his right hand on the head of another immortal. And say, I want to feed. Or think, I want to eat, or I yeah. want to feed, or whatever. He will Suck absorb them dry. their bodies. Suck them dry. Uh, and he'll also get everything that they know. Yes. You can also pass information along by placing your right hand on an immortal's head. I thought and it was giving left hand. That. Was it? I thought it was the same hand because I thought it was like a. That's a little, is he going to give me dangerous. information? That's dangerous, well, yeah. though. Yeah, you got to trust somebody if you let them give you information. Because there, there was that part where like he did that with his brother. Yeah, like, oh shit, is he, is, is he going to kill his brother? He did. No. But it's like, oh. Yeah, there's that danger <laughs> there of that. Okay. That's that's how I thought it was because I thought it was like, eh? Eh? what is he going to do? Um. Maybe it's the left hand, and I'm just misremembering. But I thought it was the same hand. But yeah. So the, there are threats to immortals from other immortals. Correct. So on the ship, um, we mentioned that Miza gave some information to his brother. He gave his brother half of the information, mm-hmm. saying like, "Hey, if you if you find a group of people that you think should have this, come to me and convince me of it, or you will probably live long enough to figure out how to do it yourself because you're." You know, you're pretty smart. Yeah. You know, with, with knowing half the formula, you could probably work out the rest of it. So he gave his brother that information. And then, like, like a day after they started becoming immortal, Szilard consumed his brother and some other passengers yeah. on the ship. Um, then he was thrown overboard, and they didn't see him on the ship again. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, we should note that ship was going from Europe to America. Oh, okay. that's how that's how they end up in in Amer- that's how that Liza sense, ends yeah. up in America and stuff. Um, so next would be Ennis, right? Yes, Ennis is next. So Ennis was a homunculus made by Salard. Correct. One of many, the latest in a line that uh, okay. all of them betray him. Um, I didn't catch that. Yeah, it's he said it at one point when she starts, like when she stabs him in the back towards the end. Uh... He's like, I knew ever so long as they go, they they start to gain independence, and then they betray me. They all do. Okay. Like, yeah, I think the underlying factor there is you. <laughs> <laughs> um, which that reminds, I was talking to somebody at, at work today. Well chatting because i work from yeah. home um say like hey you know this person wants you to call them back and he's like yeah well, i'm going on an adventure with that person i seem to get all the crazy ones i i told him like you ever start to think that that maybe you're the cause for that <laughs> <laughs> and he was nah. i can only say it to that one dude because he's always throwing dad jokes out in the group chat so oh, it's like awesome. i know he could awesome take it. yeah um okay so yeah, so she betrays him um, because he's a terrible person, and yeah. she befriends Isaac and Miria, yeah. undoubtedly, and also has a meet cute with Firo. Oh yeah, <laughs> and Firo's like, one of your buttons dropped off. I gotta go give it back to her. <laughs> it's exactly like that. You nailed it. You nailed the impression. <laughs> that's that's basically what they sound yeah. like. Um. So yeah. He, so and then he's like, okay. So she stabs Salard in the back at one point, which allows one of the other immortals, Firo, actually. Firo does it, yeah. Yeah, to, to consume him and, and gain his knowledge. Um, that had to be so weird for him. Yeah, he's like, he's into this girl, and now he's like, I remember, I have knowledge of creating you. <laughs> well, it was like all the knowledge that he soaked up from yeah, like he's like 12 an, immortals. He's, he's, like a, he's like a young little fucker, and now he's got 200 years worth of experience. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Chuck. When he puts on the glasses. It's like, now he has all this knowledge. He's like, well, crap. That's a lot to take in. We should mention Chuck from the show. Chuck. Yeah. Zachary Levi, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's so what Chuck. we're talking about when we say Chuck. We're not talking about Chuck E. Cheese or Chuck E. Finster. We're talking about Chuck. I don't know his last name. It's, it's Chuck from the show Chuck. Yeah, Chuck. Okay. I've seen a lot of Chuck. Not all of it. I watched all of it. It's pretty good. My... It falls off a little bit at the end. My roommates watched a lot of it without me, so I missed like the Gee, second half no of season that three. <laughs> Look, man, I tell you when I'm gonna keep watching stuff. All right. I still watch episodes of Psych with you when you're on there. I just can't wait three weeks to watch the next episode. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I worked at ten o'clock. I don't know if you were working till ten those days. Okay, next one listed is Lua Klein, who is Lad's fiance. Yeah, she doesn't do much. Doesn't do much. I think she does like Lad, but she kind of seems she's very passive. <laughs> you want to talk about that though? Because like, Lad's like, I'm the one who's going to kill you. Yeah, he Lad's goal is he wants to kill everyone in the world who loves life more than her, and then finally kill her <laughs> and save her, killing her. And I think in his in his own twisted way, he does love her. Yeah. But he's like... I mean, he jumps off a train for her. Yeah. Well, he doesn't want somebody else to kill her. He needs to save her so that he can kill her. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. So, yeah. yeah, She doesn't do much. So, next... That's that's a good transition. Next character should be Lad. Correct. Uh, (laughs) Lad Russo. Homicidal maniac. Just loves killing he especially loves killing people who think they're never going to die. Correct. People that think they're safe. Yes. <laughs> and it's just, for whatever reason, it's just the, the, he, their attitude. He, he's got he basically wants to be the last person alive on Earth. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think he wants to kill everybody else. Yeah. So he and just... And he's great. This he's is great. the best performance in this show because he is absolutely crazy. Is so it Brian Massey who voices him? I think think so uh that sounds, sounds familiar yeah he <laughs> i remember him as the only other role i can remember for him is that he's shark fujishiro in my bride <laughs> yeah. is a mermaid <laughs> so i think that's why i like shark fujishiro so much because like it's lat there oh, he is <laughs> um 
but he's just like he's just so he, he's he, so crazy he kills a man by boxing him to death and he's quite literally insane i love him. yes he's, it's a great performance mm-hmm. but not would not be one of lad's friends he's got a lot of them yeah <laughs> some of them uh as not as homicidal but some of them as willing to just kill people randomly some okay. of them want to steal wallets one guy told him to <laughs> to show him his tits when he was pulling <laughs> oh, up the yeah, train. <laughs> it's like, here's a guy, there's a character with no name. Give us your just, money. Yeah, 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 show us your tits. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, that's that one character's <laughs> one line. But I think he immediately gets killed immediately after that, basically. So, this character is not billed, but he does show up. Do you have, uh, do you have Claire? I there? wrote down the one's billed. Okay. We can talk about him if you want. Yeah, so they they show a character in the opening, but they don't do the little thing where they like freeze frame on him yeah. and show him his things. Partially because it's a, it's like a spoiler to yes. to show it. But there is a there's a conductor on the train, a young conductor whose original name is Claire Stanfield, but we learn he's also the assassin Vino, who works for the Gandor family, sort of. He was like friends with the Gandors. I don't know if he does his work as Vino for the Gandors. Because he does it like all over the country. And not necessarily in New York. I mean, he's kind of like a a freelance. I got the sense that he was with the Gandors. Yeah. Well, he's childhood friends with the Gandors and Firo. Yes. Um, And then he ran away at a young age and joined the circus and became like an acrobat. And Mm -hmm. he's basically, if if Dick Grayson was... Was an assassin. Yeah, was an assassin. So I guess... What is that? That would be Damian Wayne, I guess. <laughs> Damian Wayne's not really an actor. I don't know too much about think. comics. I know the bare minimum. Yeah, <laughs> not the bare minimum. I know a little bit more than the bare minimum, yeah. but not much. Um, but he he's got a he's got an attitude about him. Yeah. Uh, he he's he's, basically he the subscribes antip- to the philosophy that he, since he can only experience his own brain everything else everybody else in the world is a figment of his imagination and he is the center of the universe correct he's like, like i can't imagine the world without me it so would like, cease all the people and it would cease to exist so, yeah he basically thinks he's immortal because once he's dead the world will end yeah so he can never be killed is what yeah. he says he's not an immortal <laughs> in the traditional sense uh but he can like dodge bullets and do flips, uh, crazy ass flips, and a whole bunch Climb of stuff. Trains and yeah, he's yeah. But after he learns that one of the other conductors is um, one of the other conductors works for the black suits, correct? Um, and then he kills that person, and in the process of doing that, he also um, interrogates another conductor who shows up, but is not actually a conductor. Who killed his friend Tony, who was on his last ride. He was on his last ride. And he died Never before mind. he even boarded the train. <laughs> that was one of my notes. Tony was on his last ride. He's like, Tony was a good man. So he like He loved his wife. <laughs> he like interrogates him by like holding him like right above the the train tracks and then like having the yeah. tracks grind his arm. Mm-hmm. And then when he got his information, he ground his face into the tracks and killed him that way. Um, but that guy worked for, for Lad. He killed Tony on a whim. Yes. Like, Look at this conductor's outfit I got, Lad. <laughs> it's like, you genius. <laughs> um, that was Dune, wasn't it? Yeah, Dune, I think, was his name. <laughs> a poor friend Dune here. <laughs> Lad Spot on again. <laughs> Getting good at these impressions. I don't know how much you're joshing me, but... Eh, a little bit. I, I'm trying a little bit. So, yeah. A little bit of joshing for a little bit of trying. That makes sense. Um. Uh. So, do you want anything else about Rail Tracer? Yeah. So yeah, he basically. Well, I guess the original thing is that there's this myth about a monster who haunts trains called the Rail Tracer, who like will come up to a train and make everybody disappear. Yep. Isaac and Miria tell the story to to Chesla and Jacuzzi. Jacuzzi. Jacuzzi believes in a media. It's like I gotta find the young conductor. I gotta tell him. Okay, he knows the end of the story because Isaac and Miria don't know what to do to keep the rail yeah. tracer away. Um, and then 
And then we also like cut when he's telling the story. We also see like Clara telling the story to the to the black suit conductor, mm-hmm. um, you know, right before he cuts him off and tells him a story about how they're gonna become immortal for Tiwi Lafare and whatnot. Um, so he he becomes the rail tracer basically. He's covered in blood, yeah. and he's often depicted as like a like a kind of like carnage, just like a yeah, red. Like a sh- Red shadow monster. Shadow monster, mm-hmm. just raining destruction on on people who aren't regular passengers. <laughs> These are good passengers. I gotta kill the people who are uh, who are threatening the good passengers of this train. Yeah, he's because... basically like the rail war, rail wars guy. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's got to protect the people on the train. <laughs> yeah, um, like to the point where when they're like in New York. And he's talking to like Firo and the Gandors. He's like, like, yeah, I don't really go by Claire Stanfield anymore. If you got to call me something, I guess you can call me Vino. But really, I've been going by the Rail Tracer now. That's my new name, the Rail Tracer, until I find something better. <laughs> he's got to find something better. Yeah. Uh, Lad hates him <laughs> yes. because he hates people who think they're never going to die. And, and Lad Tracer just... <laughs> does not think he's going to die. Yeah. So. And he, he outclasses Lad. Yes, it's not not a super outclass, not as much as he outclasses everybody else, but he does outclass Lad, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Ah, oh, I know how I'm gonna beat you. I'm gonna get you to willingly jump off this train," <laughs> and he like ties a rope around Lua's neck, and when they're on top of the train, mm-hmm. and like has the rope attached to something that they're passing, and it's like, "Rope's running out. You gonna you gonna save her?" Um, so he so Lad jumps off the train because he can't have him kill him. Yeah. he's got to kill Lua. Yeah. That's his whole thing. Uh, but then he tricked him because the, it was a slipknot. She wouldn't have thrown the band. Thrown off. Yeah, yeah. The rope was the band slipknot. Wow, that I totally sense? missed that part. <laughs> you gotta pay attention, man. But yeah, no, the the knot would have slipped without her yeah. actually getting thrown off the train. But um, he threw himself off the train. Yep. Uh, who's who's next? So I, I, I know I, I jumped ship because I know that yeah. around the time that. That Lua and Lad are introduced. We see Claire, but we don't get a... Uh... Correct. So the next one is Shawnee. La... Shawnee. Shawnee. Why do I keep saying that one? It's, it's a hard ch. Ch. Shawnee. Yes. La Facette. You, you've got to be doing this on purpose. La Facette. La Faure. La Faure. That's because my R looks like a C. Okay. <laughs> so Shawnee she is, La Faure. She is the daughter of a, an OG immortal. You yep. La Faure. He was on um, the ship. She does not speak. She gave up her voice to protect her dad. And there's something weird going on where she can like telepathically communicate with him. It's like Huey has like the secret, I think, about something. Yeah. And he told her, so she gave up her voice to protect that secret. Yeah. Something like that. But he, as of the end of the 1700s, he does not know the elixir of life. We know of, yeah. That we know of. He might have figured it out, but he did not receive that information Correct. from Isa. Um, but he's he's always just been kind of coy. So he's got he's got stuff going on, and mm-hmm. the the black the black coats, um, black suits, not coats. Black suits basically worship him, but he they worship him in the sense that they want him to give them immortality, like he has. Yeah. They don't actually care what he wants, because um, he does not want to be released from prison. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. He's like, that will not serve my goals. So, Chane, you don't need to help them. And she's like, oh, okay. And then she no longer sides with the black suits <laughs> after getting that telepathic message that this they're not doing this under my orders. I don't want them to do this. So she betrays the black suits. Um, she can, like, she's pretty, she's a match for Lad, basically. They're on yeah. equal terms. He shoots and she cuts the bullets out with the, with a knife like deflects them and she's got double knives which is always cool yep double knives and a, a black dress black dress Whew. good stuff short hair <laughs> yep short hair Boom. Um, top notch uh, so then speak. because of the because of the train fight and then when um, she is able to like explain somehow to Claire that she doesn't agree with what the black suits are doing somebody else might explain that she was this, fighting I back I think he's just straight up asked her right didn't he? Yeah, there's something where it gets the point across where he's like, "Oh, you don't condone you and your master, your, your master Huey. You don't condone what's happening. Therefore, I don't have to kill you. Therefore, I love. 
<laughs> and then he's like, and I think I'm in love with you. Will you marry me? <laughs> you don't have to answer now. Just put your answer on the top of the tree. <laughs> yep, I'll, I'll read it. Because you're going to have to jump off at this river, otherwise the cops will get you. Yep. Um, you know, for being involved in this. Um, so she's like, all right, thanks, dude. She doesn't really know how she feels about it. She doesn't say him. that. No, but <laughs> you can tell that's what she's thinking. <laughs> she jumps off the train. Um, but, you know, she's, she's a badass. It's, yes. Um, <laughs> the, who's, who's next on our list? That's all I really have to say about Chelsea. Then you get guys. Nice Holy Stone and Jacuzzi Splat. Okay. So. So they are technically a couple, though they kiss. Yeah. They've been a couple for like they've been a thing for like ten years, but they had their first kiss on the train. Yeah, they're like childhood friends. Yeah, so it's kind of like okay, they're 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 young young people. Uh, Jacuzzi's got like a big sword technically tattoo. Yeah, like a weird curved sword tattoo on his face. Nice has a whole bunch of scars and is missing an eye. Um, we learn uh, in a flashback in like the last three episodes that. She was like mixing chemicals and it blew up on her and yeah. she's dead, badly injured and then Jacuzzi got the tattoo so that as so long as they're together they'd be looking at both of them and not just they're both her. Freaks. Yeah, they're both, yeah, both freaks. Um, but they've got a, like a gang. I wouldn't call it a mafia but it's yeah, they've got a gang. They're bootleggers. Mm-hmm. Um, niece loves explosives. Yes. She's, she's got like little cherry bombs. She hides a cherry bomb in her empty eye socket. It's kind of gross. It's kind of hot, too. Nah, that's gross. She's like, here, take this. Take my eye cherry bomb. It's my last one. Another spot on impression. (laughs) Um, So they have two people with them. Uh, The main ones are Donnie and Nick. Nick we kind of went over with already. He was the guy who was in that three-way train robbery. Yeah. And Donnie is this eight-foot-tall behemoth who can barely fit on the train. Yeah. And he's awesome. Donnie's cool. <laughs> I like Nick, but he's a little dumb. Yeah. Um, I don't know that 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 might have been part that got cut out. But there was a there was a scene where there's a three way train robbery where the black suits, the white suits, and Nick all try to hold up the same car at approximately the same time. Nick realizes he's the only one with a knife, and the others have guns. <laughs> just and walks he, out. He's just like, ah, sorry, excuse me, and just walks. Out. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, but he did that on a. <laughs> He thought that's what the boss told him to do because the boss told him to take care of the people in the mm-hmm. train car. But I don't think that's what they meant. Um, but yeah, but that's Jacuzzi's, the main part of Jacuzzi's gang that we see. Yeah, they have two other people with them, but they're in disguise. We don't get their names, but they're yeah. there too. They're like, one of them is a chef and one of them is a bartender. And, mm-hmm. um, and they're all just looking out for Jacuzzi. They want him to like socialize with yeah. Isaac and Miriam. It's like, well, go up and talk to him. Yeah. Jacuzzi's like this sh- like shy, timid uh, person until it comes to like actual doing stuff. I mean, yeah, he's like, he's just, he cries a lot, but yeah. like, we learn his reason is so that when something serious has happened, all his tears have dried up and he can go mm-hmm. and be serious about things. I like Jacuzzi. Jacuzzi, we'll, we'll get into this, but Jacuzzi is a main, is he's a contender for main character in my eyes. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll get into that because that's a question. That is a question that the show asks mm-hmm. and that we'll talk about briefly. Okay. But, yeah, the, that's that group. Uh, the next people listed were Eve and Dallas Ginuard. Okay. Ginuard. So, we, we've talked quite a bit about Eve and Dallas because they're... Yeah. Um, Eve is very nice. Um, she overheard Isaac and Miria, um, like, talking on her balcony. <laughs> that They did the bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, nobody can hear us. We're stage whispering. And then, like, she heard them. <laughs> She goes out and they're like, "Oh, Eve, you." They, they become friends with her and she's steal like worried about the people arguing over the inheritance. They're so like, "Well, we'll just steal your inheritance mm-hmm. and then we'll have nothing to fight about." And it's just, God, I love Isaac and so much. And then Dallas is a little shithead yeah. who hates Firo because he beat him and his friends up. He hates everybody. Uh, yeah, when the Gandors are like, "Fuck you, we don't like you." <laughs> Um, he works for uh, Szilard, uh, and then I pro- he probably planned to betray him at one point. But yeah, I think he did. Um, Szilard injects him with the half serum that he has, um, so that he can like, hey, you go, you know, I-, I gave you this, go get it back, get it back, and he's like, and I can kill you too. Mm-hmm. And he kills one of Dallas's friends yeah. by, you know, Sucking eating him. him. Um, yeah, because even the half immortals can also be. They can be killed. I don't think they can consume people, though. 
I, I think I don't think half can halves can. Yeah, I think they said at one point it's like I, I using the knowledge of the half formula, you know, they'll still they'll they'll still not sustain injuries and die of old age and we can consume them mm-hmm. to gain their knowledge. So, you know, he's they're working under threat of death and like, hey, I just gave you immortality. You can go kill whoever you want now and they can't kill you. Mm-hmm. Um and then like the end of his story after Solar gets beaten I, Isaac and Miria <laughs> they hit Solard with their car and then immediately back up and pin <laughs> yeah. Dallas and his two remaining friends under the car. Uh, and then the Gandors are like, well, we can't kill you. And I guess they decide not to yeah. consume him. So instead, I got you tied up and we're pouring cement into these barrels and we're going to drop you in the river. <laughs> you have some playing cards yeah. to keep yourself in a taint. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> so you'll be continuously drowning. Um, and then when when they tell Eve that it's it's nice he put playing cards in there with yeah, him though. In case he gets bored. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, when they tell Eve that they're like, "I will not apologize for what we did." Your brother's a dick. Your brother killed a lot of our men. And the best I can do is give you our sincerest condolences. <laughs> and she's like, "Well, can I go?" He's still down there alive, right? Like, yep. Yep. So like, I can go fetch him. Sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> So then, like, Eve's story ends with with her, you know, her... I think the Daily Days is helping fund it. Or no, um, Bartolo yeah. is funding the, the Runerata, kills Gustavo, mm-hmm. and he's like, he acted without without my permission when he killed your father and your older brother. Um, you know, so th- th- this is the fate yeah. he gets. Um, I don't want any beef with the Gandors at this point. Um but I want to go find because he wants to know what happened yeah. to Dallas too, so that he can go and like he's working with the senator and I think some other people that we don't really know. They know of the immor- immortal people, yeah. so I think they're just looking to try to research it and try to figure out figure the secret out. Yeah, stu- study Dallas, and they're like, um, they're like, you- can I can I come and visit? And he's like, you have my, you know, yes, you can. Yeah, but um, he's ours. <laughs> he is ours. Um, and then they, um, and that they kind of like it, it ends up that even though he promised that the senator is like, no, we can't have these secrets getting out. But if she's willing to spend the rest of her life in the, oh, yeah. in the facility with them, then I guess. So I think that's kind of, I think they do fish him out. I don't know if we ever like actually see him again, but no, I think it's we hinted see the at, barrel, but yeah, we don't actually see him. Yeah, but it's like okay, so she gets a sort of happy ending. Yeah. She, her brother was always nice to her, and you know, she's the only one who likes him, so... Um, she still has Benjamin with her. <laughs> Benjamin is her butler. Yeah, there's knows. a Ben in this show. <laughs> Alright, I changed my Reiki. It's a 10. Okay. We missed a character, didn't we? Or is Ches last? Ches Law is last. Okay, so Ches Law Mayor is a mysterious kid on the train. Yes. OG Immortal. Yes. Um, so he he, he's boat. been a kid for 200 years. Yep. Um, he killed his guardian... It wasn't his actual parent, but I looked it up. It yeah. was his guardian who was, like, testing the extent of their immortality by, like, torturing him daily. Yeah, he, like, shoved heated rods in his eyes, like, cut him up. Yeah, cut him up and put hot coals in his belly. And, yeah. Um, so he... Um, th- another thing about immortals is they can't use fake names when talking to other immortals. Correct. Um, so he accidentally gave his real name on the train when he was talking to Isaac and Miria, who are, spoilers, Immortal. accidentally immortals. <laughs> um, but he didn't know who the immortal was in the room. Yeah. So, like, he tries to enlist Lad to... Kill everybody. Yeah, to kill everybody in the in the train to see who comes back to life. And mm-hmm. then, you know, then consume them like he did the person who was torturing him. Uh, he's also on his way to New York to meet Miza. And consume him because he's got this like mentality that if I don't consume them, they're gonna consume me. Yeah, he's yeah. Um, so he's a little fucked up about it. He ends up not doing that. Claire does not really like him uh, because he Claire overhears him try to tell Lad to kill all the people in his train <laughs> yeah. car. Um, I think he like Old, like it, not, it, it ended up okay, so he like gave him the benefit of the doubt this time or something. Well, he like basically threatened to like torture him again. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> you don't I know. Bet, I bet you've never had every yeah. muscle stripped from your body and then etchings carved in your bones. It's like when I first watched it, I got the impression that that happened to Claire 
Like he got his muscles all torn apart and re-stitched together, and that's why he's so, you know, can do yeah, otherworldly that. like flips and shit. Um, I feel like he was speaking from experience from those kinds of pain. Okay, maybe that's but. that's what I got on my first two viewings. Less so on this one, but mm -hmm. on my my first two times watching it, that's that was the impression that I got that he was like torn apart and built back better. Built uh, better. Yeah. Like Fords. <laughs> that their slogan built better i don't know I don't, I don't pay attention to cars i drive a I drive a toyota i don't know um maybe i shouldn't say that maybe we'll lose followers because because people hate toyotas or something i, I just remember there being like a ford versus dodge versus no it's Chevy. ford versus ferrari it stars <laughs> christian bale no i I'm not talking about a movie. I'm talking about people we went to high school with. Some people uh, be like, this truck is shit. And uh, other people be like, this truck is shit. And it's like, whatever. They're all trucks. It's a truck. Um, that's a tangent. We are talking about uh, Bill Better, Claire Stanfield, Tesla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, OJ Mortal, one second to my decides not to do it. Um, he thinks when he learns, he sees, um, he was like, damaged by um he's damaged by claire and then like put under the train yeah he can't move and then isaac and miria see him and go to like save him isaac suffers a cut on his wrist while doing it without realizing it and it automatically heals Chez sees that and then fears that isaac is going to consume him but no he saves him yes yeah. so um and they well first of all isaac and miria don't know they're immortals don't know they can consume people like that um, but also they just, they just don't want him to get hurt. Yeah. Uh, he's like missing an arm at the They also point. think he's a kid. Yeah. They also think he's a little kid. So yeah. Um, so they rescue him. Mm -hmm. Um, there's. And then what is it? They get to New York and like Maze is like, oh, it's so good to see you. And then he basically. He like pats him on the head, like yeah. with his left hand, I think it's like, oh, I guess he's I not going to kiss him. I don't remember. But he, he basically gets his trust back. Yeah, or slowly. Yeah. But Isaac and Miria decide because the whole reason they're going <laughs> oh, yeah. the whole reason they're going to New York is because Ennis sent them a letter, um, and they misunderstood her letter as her wanting a baby brother. <laughs> and be like, but we're not we're not Ennis's parents, so we can't give her a baby brother. It's like, well, I guess we'll just give her steal something. a bunch of money from the mafia, <laughs> and then they're just going to give her a big gift. I yeah, think. they're going to give her a big gift, and then they forgot to buy the big gift. So, so they, but then they decide, hey, we'll give you Chez as your brother, because <laughs> yeah. he doesn't have a family, so he, you know he can be your family. Mm -hmm. And she's like, what? Okay, okay, I guess Chez can hang out with me. I, whatever. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically Chez Law's stuff. He's just yeah. there to be a mysterious kid that mm -hmm. doesn't trust people. Um, that's all your main characters. That's well, like we, skipped. we skipped. Oh, the first yeah, you're two. right. We skipped. So, so, Isaac and Maria. It's time for All Aboard Ship of the Week. So, Isaac and Maria might quite possibly be my OTP. Now, do you know what that means? No. One true pairing. One true pairing. Okay. So, they are they're quite possibly... The best couple ever in all okay. existence. Okay. They're, and if they're not the best, they're definitely up there with, okay. you know, my, some of my favorites, uh, Okabe and Mikey Sekurusu and uh, Haruhi and Kion. Yeah, that's like, those two have to be. Those top. two are contenders. Yeah. Okay. They're definitely contenders. Um, I don't know if there's a fourth, but the. I can't think of any off the top of my head. I'm sure. Maybe. Maybe Ed and Winry? Maybe. Oh, well. But anyway, they are... They spread happiness everywhere they go, unintentionally. Mm -hmm. um, no. They... They're just a bunch of goofballs. They do, like, little fun dances, and they've got comedy bits that they unknowingly do. Um, they trust each other implicitly. There's never any, like... They never say, like, oh, this is my girlfriend, or I love you, or anything like that. But you can tell that they've been together a long time and they they are their life partners yeah. <laughs> to the fact that they realized that they were immortal in 2001 it took them 
70 years to figure out they were immortal. Yep. Uh, hey, and we yeah. haven't aged. Huh. <laughs> Weird that. Um, they show up in an episode of Bacchino. Actually show up in... You mean... Not so, Bacchino. They show yeah. up in an episode of Durarara, the author's other yeah. series. Um, they actually show up technically in two, but one of them is like episode 11 and a half. That's weird. Um, voiced by other people because of contracts and things, but... Um, Voiced by J. Michael Tatum. Probably his best performance. Uh, it's my okay. favorite performance of his. Uh, I can't think of any off the top of my head other than Okabe and Dr. Jell and Space Dandy. I don't know. All I know is Okabe. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he's got a lot of other stuff, okay. but um, he's, he's prolific. But mm-hmm. this is probably my favorite favorite character of his. Um, they, they're like they're cosplay thieves. Some of their crimes include they, they dressed up as... Babe Ruth and uh, Ty Cobb. <laughs> they dressed up as Babe Ruth and Ty Cobb and, and hit over the... Just like whacked some Russo family goons with a baseball bat. Stole their money. Their idea of a train robbery is that they take a train to their destination, perform a robbery, and then get back on the train to leave. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. And then there's a scene where Isaac forgets that and he's like, Miri, it's time to do our train robbery. She's like, didn't we already do the train robbery? He's like, you're right, Miria. <laughs> <laughs> um, they they give Jacuzzi a pep talk. And he's like, I'm going to have to go out there and face those goons with my guns. He's like, but Isaac, you don't have guns. A true cowboy Jacuzzi. He's got his guns in his heart. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and they do like this like whole bit. I, I put a gif up on the of that scene on the, on the Twitter. So you should follow us on Twitter. Um they're just they're just so chipper and happy the fact that like I read their entire wiki entry on the the, the fan made wiki for Bacchino and like there's a point where he goes to he goes to prison he goes to Alcatraz for like 50 days and it was some sort of like weird decision that was made he never had a trial but like I think they they had to send him to Alcatraz when they were in when they, he was picked up because he's an immortal. I think they knew that before he did. Uh, okay. But while in Alcatraz, befriended Lad Russo of all people. Like, even Lad <laughs> doesn't want to kill Isaac because, well, you know, he wouldn't really get it. <laughs> um, but he's just, he's he's unknowingly, he's friends with everyone. They're, yeah. they're the connecting link between the 1930 story and the 1931 story. Mm-hmm. Um you know, and sort of the connecting link with Eve too, because they're they know Eve because they stole her fortune, yeah. you know, in the past or whatnot. So, um, what are what are some of the other crimes that they've done? They stole the entrance to well, a they museum. They said they've done like over eighty robberies. Eighty seven robberies. But like nobody has good pictures because they no, all no think everyone it's a has joke. everyone has good pictures. Oh. People take pictures with them on the street because they're okay. dressed up in costumes and stuff. Like they're dressed up. I think as, it's like a bit. Or something. Yeah. They're dressed up as, like, mummies, and they stole the door to a museum. Like, we tried to steal the whole museum, but we realized that was ridiculous. So we just stole the entrance so nobody could enter. <laughs> because that's how that works. You mm-hmm. steal a door, and that means nobody can the enter. Opening, they steal chocolate bars. Yeah, they steal chocolate bars in the opening sequence, <laughs> dressed up as Santa Claus and, like, the Headless Horseman, yeah. I guess. Because he's got a pumpkin mask mm-hmm. and a cape on. Uh, at one point, when he's fighting, like, Dallas and his thugs, he... He's wearing a, a samurai outfit, and he says that he's <laughs> Professor Moriarty. And then when they're not impressed by his little display, he's like, Would you believe Jack the Ripper? <laughs> um, just, I just love them so much. I could, I could catch about them for a very long time. Um, I mean, there are some other ships in this show yeah. if we want to. So, I think them. Isaac and Miriam are, are your ships, are, is the best one. But I just want to give a shout out to Enos and Pharaoh. Ennis and Firo. Ennis and Firo. 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 It's like the Pokemon, Firo. I don't like Firo. I always say Firo, too. <laughs> okay, well, that's that's your own problem. Uh, Ennis and Firo. Ennis and Firo. Yep, I liked Ennis and Firo. I mean, everybody knows that they had that scene where it's like, oh, oh yeah, they're a co- yeah, yeah, yeah. And they had a meet cute. It's called yeah. a meet cute. Okay. It's when the two characters that are you know, are supposed to be in like a romantic comedy or whatever. Have a have a weird meeting that that endears them to each other. Yeah. So in this too. case, he kills her dad. 
It takes all of his. Knowledge. Well, that's that's after the meat. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, yeah. No, he kills her dad after she stabs him in the back. That's true. And tells him to do it. It was a double. Tells kill. him it, how. It tells a, him how to kill. It was a couple's kill. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> <couple's> kill. <laughs> okay, but Isaac and Miria also help by hitting him with a car. <laughs> double date. Double date kill. Yeah. Um. So the, yeah, there's you gotta throw that out there. Um, I mean you gotta you gotta talk about Jacuzzi and Nice. They're yeah. they're they're cute together. Um, Chone and Rail Tracer. Ch- Chone and the Rail Tracer. There we um, go. The, she's a little bit more open to it after the last three episodes, and it's a little mm-hmm. bit more of a follow up. And she's like, he's like, well, you don't have to marry me right away. Like, but that's what I want. Yeah. I've decided that. Um, you know, we can take our time with it, type of thing. And she's like, maybe. <laughs> I'm I'm intrigued by you, but you know, like I think the message that she left on the train was like, "You try to find me, I'll try to find you when you get to New York," type of thing. Yeah. So, um, uh, I think those are your main ones, though. Yeah, I don't really think. Oh well, there's Lad and Lua. Meh. Yeah. Um. That's that's really Almost about it. Lad and Lad. <laughs> um, Lad and Murder. <laughs> There we go. Um, so yeah, it's there's some good ships in this, but Isaac and Miria are just they yeah. steal every scene they're in. Yeah, you can't. You're like, ah, yes, we're back to Isaac and Miria. Good, good. Um, even when they're being snooty, they're adorable. Like they bump into Firo and Miza before they know who they are. They bump into them at a hat shop, and they're like, oh, sorry about that, um, or excuse us or something. And like for carelessness, there is no excuse. And then Miria chimes in, no excuse. That was not a spot on impression. Don't you dare say that that Miria was anything. spot on I didn't say anything on that one. It's, it's just like, why? They improve everything that they're in. There's a fun scene where they're trying to steal gold from the earth. They bought a mine with some of their robbery money. Um, that's that's before they get onto the train. They're, they're just mining. Yeah, they're not trying to steal gold, though. They're no, they, they, gold. they say that at one point. They're oh, like... Okay. Um, I was like, well, what if we move out to California and join the gold rush? It's like, I thought we were robbers. It's like, well, we'll be stealing gold from the earth itself. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a throwaway line, but they, they just live in this. And I actually read um, in the in their in the books, mm-hmm. they read that uh, they actually died in that mine shaft from like fumes and whatnot, <laughs> and their dead bodies were carried out of the mine shaft later on. And then they woke up not knowing what it was and then just left the train. <laughs> so that, that happened in the books, did not happen in the things. But let's let's move on from the uh, our our ship of the week here. Um, talk about best girl. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna throw out uh, Miria as best girl. Okay. Um, props to Innes. I'm gonna, I'm to gonna go with Innes. Okay. She's my favorite. Uh, do we do we have another poll? I won the last poll. I mean, you could put one up, but I don't know. I, I like, I like this is the type of show I, where I don't think it really matters. Yeah. So, I mean, should we talk about our, our question here that the characters themselves ask in the first episode? Okay. Who is the main character of this show? Yeah, let's do it. Who's the main character to you? Originally, I would have said Firo. Okay. This watch through, I want to say Isaac and Miria are both the main characters. That's what I think I would lean towards. It's those two. Um, and I then think... I, I would also lean towards um, Jacuzzi a bit too. So I think those and Lad, okay. those four are probably. I think it. The, the I think it's Isaac and Miria most... because I I feel like they're the thing that's kind of they're the, they're the arching connecting everything. Thread. Yeah, yeah, they're the connecting thread to all of these stories. Yeah, but they don't. Do much. No. Uh, well, let, they're the ones who. They save Chaz. They encourage Jacuzzi. Yeah. They they tell Jacuzzi about the rail tracer that causes him to go and try to find him. I mean, they um, steal the fortune, which they, turns. They steal the fortune, which which gets Dallas up in arms about yeah. things. Um, they, they're the ones who like take. They're not the first ones, but they're the one of the ones who takes the elixirs. Yep, yep, but they, they had the elixir for quite a while. Mm-hmm. They're the reason that the mafia becomes yeah. immortal uh, and that they themselves become immortal. Mm-hmm. Um, they 
they are part of why Innis becomes a real person. Yeah. I would say that, that Firo is a little bit of that, but it's mostly, it's mostly uh, those Isaac two. and Miria. Um, yeah, they're, they're the connecting threat. They're, yeah. I mean, they're they, the main they character. Stole money from the, the, the real answer is there is no main character. It's an ensemble cast. Yeah. But, but, but Isaac and Miria, in my eyes, are yeah probably the, the main characters. They're a the connecting thread. They're who I want to see on screen. So... I don't know if I could do a full show of Isaac and Miria. It might be too much. That I think much. I think the I think the juxtaposition of how serious everybody else is mm -hmm. and how ridiculous they are is what makes them work. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, they're they're probably the main characters. We'll go with that. That's what I. Think. Oh, you know who we didn't mention? Who? Rachel. Rachel. <laughs> Rachel doesn't get billing either, but she is on the train. She's basically a stowaway. Yeah, um, she's. Works she's got a the beef with newspaper. the railway. She, yeah, she works for the Daily Days. She's an information gatherer, reporter, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, she's got a beef with the railway, but she also loves the railway. Her dad was an engineer, but there was an accident that was not his fault, but that they officially blamed him for in the investigation. So she like her her payback is that she's like stowed away on trains like 130 times or something. Yeah. Because at the end of it, uh, I guess, well, the rail tracer scares her by going, like, tickets, please. Tickets, please. <laughs> um, but then decides that because he is helping some of the passengers and that she went and bought, like, 130 tickets and then immediately threw them away. He's like, well, yeah, I guess I won't kill you because you, you did end up buying a ticket, yeah. but you got to go the right way next time. On point with these accents today. Impressions. You gotta stop encouraging me. I'll keep doing that. Do it. Um, I can't not I'm when the they real talk. Tracer. It's just it's how they talk. I'm sorry. It's like when I do a Mark Wahlberg impression. It's like I think we got ourselves a transformer. I can't not say it like Mark Wahlberg. Is Mark Wahlberg in this room? <laughs> no, but we did go to the same church that his family goes to sometimes when we visited oh, Boston yeah. two years ago. Yeah, it would have been oh, two years ago from two, no, it would have been it, no, it, it was. It was two, because last year, it, it was in April, because it was when I was off work. Okay. I took off work. And then it wasn't last year, because I didn't go anywhere, okay. because of COVID. It wasn't this year, so it had to have been the year before. Okay. So. Because when I was longer. And that's felt like a very long time since we went to Boston. <sighs> You're right. Okay. Anyways. Um, yeah, so she's on the train. Whatever. She doesn't do much. She really mm -hmm. does not. She saves some people. She's voiced by... Trina Nishimura? Yes. Um, the voice of Makise Kurosu and Steinsgate. So it's almost like we like Steinsgate. Almost. It's almost like it's probably on both of our favorite anime lists. <laughs> Which is a transition. Transition. Johnny, you're doing your number eight. Yes. My number eight favorite anime is Cowboy Bebop. Good old Cowboy Bebop. Ready? Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Three, two, one, let's jam. Okay, that's not a spot on impression? Alright, whatever. No. Um, oh, what can I say? Cowboy Bebop. Everyone likes Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. Watch the dub. It's got Wendy Lee in it again. It's got motherfucking Steve Bloom. Uh, it's it's basically, got a dog. <laughs> for a lot of people, the anime that got him into the genre. Yeah, it's like the, the Western anime... That if you watch Cowboy Bebop, you're like, oh shit, this is for adults? People can like this? It's a space western shoot 'em up. Sometimes like they parodied Alien in an episode for, for whatever reason. Um, the choreography is amazing. It's like Shinitro Watanabe's like, first anime, I think. Wow. They basically told him, hey, you can make your anime whatever you want. But it's got to have spaceships in it so we can sell spaceship toys. Nice. And then you make Cowboy Bebop. And they're like, oh, shit. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is amazing. Thanks. <laughs> Do it again. You should make more things. Um, it's a little bit more episodic. I know we talked about yeah. one of your favorites with Samurai Champloo. More episodic than that. Um, there are, like, episode six is important to the overarching plot. And, like, episode, I don't know, 13 or something. It, it, it kind of comes together. You learn backstories of characters and... But a lot of it is just like, hey, it's the bounty of the week. Let's go try to get this mm -hmm. bounty and then fail to actually claim our reward because of, you know, stipulations on it. Like, like oh, well, they're no longer asking for a bounty because this person was 
absolved of their crime, pardoned or whatever. Like they save the day, but they don't get any rewards, so they're always hungry. Yeah. Um, Ed and Ein, great. <laughs> just they're they're kind of like the Isaac and Miria. <laughs> they they just lighten the mood. All right. So I liked Cowboy Bebop again. I think I ran into the mistake of binging it. Yeah, we tried really hard to binge that, and it was it's like okay, we watched like six episodes, and I cannot continue. Yeah. But I've said this before. If I could watch just one episode of Cowboy Bebop a week for the rest of my life, that'd be amazing. It's like it's 2 a.m. on a Saturday and Toonami's playing Cowboy Bebop. Hell yeah, I'll watch yeah. that if I'm still awake. Like, um, I probably It's probably one of those shows that I maybe saw like an episode or two of when I was a little bit too young to have seen it and it intrigued me. I, I feel like that was the case. I feel like I saw the first episode with Vicious. Where they like have the confrontation in the church and stuff. I feel like oh, okay. I saw that episode, you know, before actually watching the series when I was a little bit younger. Mm-hmm. So it's like, like, damn, that was that would be a good episode to just watch. Like, shit, that was cool, <laughs> dramatic. Um, yeah, no, watch Cowboy Bebop. It's great. Okay. Yeah, good. Uh, so next week um, we are going to be watching um, Ping Pong the Animation. Our first sports anime. Our first sports anime outside of the Rule of Six Spring anime, a Rule of Spring anime, where we watched two sports animes. Uh, we only watched the first three yeah. episodes of one of them, and the first four episodes of the one for that. This will be a full. That. <laughs> well, we we have continued to watch Burning Kabaddi, but at the time of recording, we only watched four episodes of Burning Kabaddi. I think. No, we're on like episode seven. Yeah, now I'm talking time of recording. Uh, when we did Rule of Spring, when we, we only talked about the first one. Just, never mind. Yeah, you're right. When we watched, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, we. Yeah, but this one will be the first full sports anime that, that Ben will have ever seen, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Um, so, yeah, we'll watch that. Um, it's supposed to be a classic. I've seen the first four episodes when it was originally airing, and then for whatever reason, I dropped off. Nothing against the episodes, just a. Uh, you know, I got busy or something. I was probably in college, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll see you next week. Um, uh, don't forget, forget to like us. Yes, follow li- us. Like the video on, you know, subscribe to us on YouTube if you want or don't. I'm a stranger on the internet, not your dad. Uh, but we would really appreciate it. And follow us on Twitter at anime underscore territory. Um, we'll put up a poll there. I'll sometimes tweet weird anime opinions or gifts of things or I don't know. I don't do too much on it, but. If if I want to get more followers, I'll do more stuff. Yeah. Encourage my bad behavior, I'll do it. So, um, send us questions if you want. Um, Recommendations. Recommendations. Not saying we'll follow them, but, I mean, we we had a, (laughs) right before the episode started, we're like, oh, shit, we need to pick another episode. What do we, what do we, or another anime to watch next time? What do we watch? And we struggled for a little bit before we finally decided on this. So, recommendations will help. Uh, I know I... I threw out like a recommendation tweet that people who don't follow us, I guess, saw because I got a couple of responses from like random people saying, watch Slayers, watch something else. So I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'll watch a shit ton of Slayers this weekend. <laughs> Did you ever finish that? Uh, I finished the first two seasons and then I never finished the third. Okay. I'll get back to it. The third one's not as good so far. I'm not as intrigued. Okay. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Cool. I mean, we're not talking about Slayers anymore. Adios. Bye.